On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, container ship sailings between Asia, the US, and Europe as of mid-2020. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercoglano. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. So I get asked a lot of questions about container ships, and we've talked a lot about container ships on this channel. Everything from the beginning with the Ever Given going aground in the Suez to Ever Forward going ashore off of Baltimore to the supply chain crisis, including the backlog of ships off of LA and Long Beach to the new supply chain issues that we see developing here in the second half of 2022. But I thought it'd be interesting to take a moment here and take a look at where the world's container ships are. Now I've done past videos that look at the development of container ships, how they've grown in size, the development of the container alliances, and I'll have those all up here for you to take a look at. So if you wanna delve into those areas, you can. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's take a look at world container ship deployment. So one of the sources I'm gonna be using for today's video is this source right here, the Geography of Transport Systems by Jean-Paul Rodrigue. Uh, this book is out in its fifth edition, but most importantly, uh, Jean-Paul has put this act, this resource online for you. You can go over to transportgeography.org. It is great. I heartily recommend it. He has several other books on this, one on ports that is great that I use a lot. So a lot of the graphics and images you're gonna be seeing here today are from him. I will have this referenced in the show notes and a link above so that you can go right over to it. I always wanna give fair credit. I think this is an amazing resource. I use it in my maritime history course and my maritime security course. So let's talk a little bit about this. So one of the things that's going on right now that we know is container ships are on the rise. We're seeing orders for new container ships like never before. Matter of fact, when you look at the order books for ships right now, it's almost all container ships with a huge influx of ships coming in in 2023 and 2024. And in particularly, what we're seeing in that mix are very small little vessels, this big, big blue block right here you're seeing in number of ships. Uh, those are ships between 1,000 to 3,000 TEU. They are largely what we call feeder ships. But the vessels that we're seeing a lot being added here, down here in the, this bright orange, in terms of capacity, remember these are ships on order. This is not total capacity. Ships on order are those between 12 and 17,000 TEU. These are Neo Panamax vessels. These are vessels that can basically go through the new lane of the Panama Canal. And if you look at the, the development of ves vessels, this again comes from transport geography. And again, I have a video that talks about the evolution of ships here that I'll have for you. This new type right here, that Neo Panamax, right around 12,500, it's actually bigger than that now. It's actually up to 15 to 16,000 TEU uh, is an important element. And what we're seeing is the big nine companies along with Zim, Zim, who's not technically an alliance, although they are working with 2M quite a bit, you'll see the companies that have placed big orders. And in terms of millions uh, millions of TUs on order, MSC, Mediterranean shipping is way up there. In terms of percent of order TUs to existing fleet, Zim, uh, which had very few vessels uh, at one time, it was one, the rest they leased, are putting orders in. And you can see where everybody is. The interesting one here is Maersk. Maersk is not ordering that many ships because I think they're hedging their bet until they figure out what's going to happen with propulsion. This chart that's also by Jean-Paul Rodrigue, but this is in the review of Maritime Transport, talks about liner ship connectivity index. How connected are countries and ports to the world? And while this is a weird kind of imagery of the world, it's a really good one. Because the thing to see here is where connections is. And connections are along this axis from the US to Asia, through the Mediterranean to Europe, and then across the Atlantic back to the United States. That's the connectivity. Places that are in lighter color are less connected, obviously. Africa, we see a lot less connectivity, some in South America, some in Central Asia, some in Southeast Asia. But the big connectors are these trans-Pacific routes that go from East Asia across the Pacific to the West Coast of the United States, uh, from Asia through the new lane of the Panama Canal, that lane that was opened in 2016, that goes to the East Coast of the United States, and then from East Asia 
through the Malacca Straits, across the Indian Ocean, through the Bab el-Mandab, through the Suez Canal, to the either the Mediterranean, Southern Europe, or through the Straits of Gibraltar toward Northern Europe. And that's what we're basically seeing right now. In terms of cargo flow, this is a chart also by uh, Transport Geography, and I'm gonna break this up in even more here in a second. I just wanna show you a couple of things that are really, really important here to understand. So this shows you total millions of TEUs by year from 1995 to 2020. Just note, all the total millions of containers, roughly around 15 million containers that were moved in 1995 were eclipsed just in the trade from East Asia to North America in 2015. We have tremendously leapt from where we were before. And you can see how these large sectors here, East Asia to North America, North America to East Asia, East Asia to Europe, uh, Europe to East Asia, North America to Europe. And this is this section is actually growing a bit right here. And then Europe, uh, excuse me, Europe to North America, that's also growing. And we're going to talk about why here in a second. So that kind of gives you the backdrop for the deployment of the vessels. Now, let me go into the deployments and talk about them. So again, this map was done by John Paul Rodrigue for Transport Geography. And I'm gonna remove myself because I think you're tired of looking at my shirt already. So real quick, by mid-July of 2022, we are seeing a grand total of 5,937 container ships out there in the world with a total capacity of 25,665,460 TEU. TEU is 20 foot equivalent unit, even though the standard container largely used today is the 40 foot, the FEU, which is two TEUs. We still measure containers by that, uh, by that uh, uh, guide. That averages out to about 4,323 per ship. TEU, which is a good size ship. Let me be clear. I mean, you go back just a very brief period of time, you know, just 20 years, that was a fairly large vessel at the time. But as we've seen, ships have increased in size. Again, go back to that video I talked about earlier, where I talk about the size of vessels from Ideal X up to Ever Given and Ever Forward. So let's take a look at these routes and discuss how they do. So before I do that, real quick to summarize the organization of container ship companies. So there are three large alliances that are out there. Those three large alliances represent almost 85% of the total capacity of containers out there. They're made up of nine companies. This chart right here shows you the integration of these companies into these large alliances. There's the 2M Alliance made up of 2M name companies. Maersk and Mediterranean Shipping, although I will add that Zim is taking part in the 2M. And for purposes of this uh, calculations, I included Zim as part of the 2M because they do have some shared agreements with them. There is the Alliance. The Alliance is the smaller of the, th of the three. It's made up of four companies, Hapag Lloyd, ONE, ONE, which is the Ocean Network Express, it's made up of three separate companies, Japanese companies, what was NYK Line, MOL, and the K Line. Uh, HMM, which is uh, the old Hyundai Merchant Marine, but now just referred to as HMM. And then Yang Min. And so those four companies make it up. Uh, Maersk is Danish Mediterranean Shipping, is a uh, French uh, Swiss, uh, uh, excuse me, Italian Swiss company. HMM is Korean, Hapog Lloyd is German, uh, ONE is Japanese, Yangmin is Taiwanese. And then the third one, the, the, the middle of the three is the Ocean Alliance. And the Ocean Alliance consists of CMA CGM group, that is French. Uh, it includes Costco and OOCL, which is merged together. They are People's Republic of China, mainland China, and then Evergreen. Evergreen is Taiwanese. And so I'm going to be breaking this up above, among the three alliances, 2M, the Alliance, and the Ocean Alliance. So when you start looking at this, we're going to be looking at shipments from East Asia. And when we talk about East Asia, we largely talk about China, but it also does include Japan, Korea, Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore, and that region. So when you look at the first ones we have here, we're looking from East Asia to the US West Coast. 
So what's interesting about this route, number one, is there's really no choke points in it. It's wide open across the Pacific. And what you see here is the three alliances obviously dominate this area. 85.9% of all trade across the Pacific to the east, to the west coast of the United States. This is from Seattle, Tacoma, all the way down to LA and Long Beach is handled by these alliances. The Ocean Alliance, and again, the Ocean Alliance, CMA, CGM, Costco, Evergreen, has the lion's share of that with nearly 40% of that cargo. 2M has 24% and the Alliance has 21, equates to 85.9%. This is as of mid-July 2022. It's based on 13-week average of what's going on. There are 355 ships involved in this trade again there's 5937 ships worldwide so a, a a small percentage of the ships however these are some of the largest ships involved on average these ships can carry 7771 teu and combined those vessels can carry nearly 2.75 million teus in capacity it is a large massive trade that takes place between the east asia and the u.s west coast the next one here is the uh, East Asia to the East Coast of the United States. That trade, again, is dominated by the Ocean Alliance. This uses that key choke point of the Panama Canal. This trade goes through the three lanes of the Panama Canal, the two that were opened in 1914, and then the new lane, which opened in 2016. That new lane can accommodate larger vessels, those Neo-Panamax. Ocean Alliance, again, controls 40.4% of the trade. The 2M Alliance, Maersk and MSC, have a much larger section here, 33.5, and then, then the Alliance, 21.5. But notice how those three carriers control 95.4% of all the trade coming out of East Asia to the U.S. East Coast are by the alliances. 305 ships, so less ships than are going to the West Coast, but these are larger ships. On average, 9,100 TEU and just a bit higher in total capacity than going to the West Coast at 2.78 million TEU. Let's look from East Asia now to Europe. Let's look from East Asia to the Med. So this route is chocker blocked with choke points it has to go through. You have to go through the Taiwan Straits. You have to go through the South China Sea, the Straits of Malacca, the region just south of Sri Lanka, the Bab el Mandab at the very end of the Red Sea, the Suez Canal, which we saw get blocked by the Ever Given into the Mediterranean. In this case, the 2M alliance, Maersk and MSC, have the lion's share here with 35%, and then the Ocean Alliance and the Alliance fairly evenly split at about 26% each, total 88.2%, only 130 vessels on this trade route. So substantially less than you see either on the West Coast or East Coast of the United States. But notice the ships are immensely larger. These are 12,205 average TEU vessels. They can carry 1.6 million TEU in that region. So what you're seeing is those much larger ships the beginning that we saw back in 2006 with the introduction of the Emma Maersk, they're running much larger ships from East Asia into the Mediterranean. And what they do here is then transload that cargo at these major ports in the Mediterranean to smaller feeder vessels and distribute them out. The last route we'll look at here is East Asia to Northern Europe. Again, we see another split here. The Ocean Alliance is the dominant group on this one at 44.1%. Notice that not one alliance has more than 50% on any of these trade routes. They try not to become too much of a monopoly for fear of antitrust legislation, either by the US or the EU against them. 2M has 30.7 and the Ocean Alliance has 23.7, but note, 98.5% of that trade is controlled by the alliances. Now, I should make a note here. Some of these ship shipping companies operate not on pure alliance routes. Sometimes they operate as independent routes. In other words, Maersk may ship cargo from East Asia to Northern Europe, and they may not do it as part of their 2M agreement. They're doing it just as Maersk. However, I included them on here since they are in an alliance system. I didn't break it out that much. Again, notice here, a lot less ships on this route than you see going to the US east or west coast, 230 ships, but 
in terms of size, these are the biggest. On average, 16,614 TEU. These are the big carriers that are operating out there in the world. A grand total of 3,821,205 containers. And what you're seeing here is a massive amount of cargo moving. Now, I didn't break this down to all the other regions because these four are actually the largest that you see. And when you break it down even just a little bit more, if you incorporate the West Coast and East Coast runs out of Asia, you're talking about 11.1% of all the world's container ships, the 5,937, are involved in this trade, yet they represent 21.6% of the capacity. If you look at trade within the Far East, in intra-Far East, it takes up nearly 30% of the vessels, but in terms of capacity, it's less than 10%. So what you're seeing here is, you know, just one out of 10 vessels or one out of nine vessels are operating from Asia to North America, yet they, they contain one out of five total capacity of all vessels. The average vessel size sailing from Asia to North America, 8,385 TEU. When you come from Asia to Europe, even smaller percentage of the vessels, 6.1% of the vessels, yet they have nearly the same capacity as those 11.1 heading to America, 21.1% capacity. Look at the total uh, TEU capacity right there. We're talking about 21.1% capacity right there. Also note the size of those vessels, 15,022 TEUs on average. The last route I'll just have here is the Europe to the U.S. East Coast. I don't have a breakdown on that by the three alliances, but what you'll see is 2.6% of all container vessels are on that route, 3.1% of total capacity, with an average TEU of about 5,000. And these are the vessels that are coming out of those terminals in the Mediterranean and Northern Europe and bringing boxes from Europe to the United States. We're seeing a lot more traffic right now come that route, either to the east coast of the U.S. via the large lane of the Panama Canal or via the large vessels, those ultra-large container vessels, because of the discounted costs and lower freight rates to get them on those vessels and then continuing across the Atlantic on smaller vessels. And so what this image should give for you right here is how the world's container ships are moving, the size of vessels that are on the key routes, and most importantly of all, how the alliances play a big factor in this. So I hope that gave you a little bit of background on uh, container ships, their routes, their capacity, how they operate on the key routes. I obviously didn't go into, for example, South America, uh, uh, Africa, the intra-theater movement that goes on, because these represent really the big ones. And this is what a lot of people are obviously focused in on. Uh, if you're interested in the development of this, I would heartily recommend uh, Mark Levinson's book, Outside the Box. I think this is a great one how globalization changed from moving stuff to spreading ideas. Uh, his previous book, The Box, is about the development of container ships, but this newer uh, edition really does a great job in summarizing it. I hope you liked today's episode. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you can get future episodes as they come out. Take a moment, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. And if you can, if you can, please contribute to the page. You can do so in two ways. One, you can hit the super thanks button below where you can contribute directly to this video, or you can head over to Patreon and become a patron of the channel. This allows me to subscribe to news sources, to spend some time needed to do this research without having to be an adjunct teacher over the summer and do a lot of other small jobs to keep me in the shirts I am accustomed to wearing. I hope you enjoyed today's shirt. This is brought to you by my institution, Campbell University, home of the fighting camels. Great shirt. Uh, until our next episode, this is Sal signing off.